what's her name? The girl, she actually wants, she asked for an apology from you. From From who? I don't know who that is. <laughs> Welcome back. We are back Welcome this week back. with another week of This Week in Money. Uh, what have we been doing the last week? I don't know what happened last week. I watched uh, the movie Independence Day for the okay. first time nice. yesterday. I mean, I don't know how I'd been living without seeing that. Yeah, Phenomenal. Jesus. Phenomenal movie. Wow, just yeah. as the Barbie movie's starting to come out. I know. Now. Yeah. I know. Are we going to see that? Is, are yeah. we going to team Barbie? We, we need to do that, do a review, and then they, there's the Oppenheimer one, too. Oh, right. Oppenheimer. Big one. Yeah, excited I'm more for excited that. for Barbie. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, actually. I mean, Barbie's got, uh, what's her name in it? The Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Babe. Yeah. How can you say no to that? I know. Threads just became the fastest growing app ever. Twitter traffic is down almost 11% compared to the same days in 2022 due to the launch of Meta's competitor, Threads. The new app has already surpassed 100 million signups since its debut last week. Mark hopped on pretty early. How are you feeling? Early vibes of Threads. So when when I first uh, found out about this, uh, I believe it was last Wednesday, I was on a little walk in Central Park, phone started buzzing, and it was cool in the beginning when you're getting all the notifications mm-hmm. and everything. New platform for me to uh, just put some propaganda out there and unhinged comments, I thought, great. But as uh, it's gone on, you know, we're almost a week in, it's, it's very different than Twitter. Uh, people are almost too nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you find that there's no burner or anon account, so people's true colors don't really show. It's basically just Instagram on Twitter. You know, it's the same content being regurgitated from the same people. But my biggest problem with this is that for all the OnlyFans girls that they can't post their content, which I think is truly a shame for everyone's feed. They're gonna stay on Twitter. Them Mm -hmm. and all the journalists are staying on Twitter and all the Anon kind of shit poster accounts. But yeah, yeah, going on there, it just kind of feels like it's brands making fun of each other Mm -hmm. and Zuck just chiming in here and there. It's like, oh wow, Zuck popped up. And uh, I don't know. Did did Zuck cuck? Musk? Ooh, yeah. Elon did call Zuck a cuck. He did. Dude, and I, they're fucking pumping the hell out of this fight. Whoa, whoa. What do you think about the dick measuring contest, the literal dick measuring contest that may happen? Who would win? Well, so Elon Musk's father said in an interview the other day that his son is not circumcised. So that could be cheating depending on how, you know, if we're just going circumcised or, or Get an extra couple millimeters on Yeah, that. you know, I mean, who knows? Um, so who do you think would win in a dick measuring contest? I would say Elon. He's Just the uncircumcised. Yeah, you have a few extra millimeters. Yeah, that, I don't know. I think he'll win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? Uh, he, Elon got all caught up in a bunch and decided to sue Zuck for yeah. uh, IP theft and trade trade secret theft. A- Andy suing Wachtell that, oh, for yeah. the, the payment, which, you know, the, the lawyers at Wachtell were working for Twitter at the time, which during the closing period, they have the fiduciary duty for Twitter and the shareholders. So the, that was obviously to get the deal done. Right. And now Musk is saying, oh, 90 million is too much. But it's actually like pretty fair in terms of a deal that size for the fine lawyers at Wachtell, which I think that 90 uh, million accounted for about a tenth of uh, their revenue last year. Wow, that's a big client, huh? Mm-hmm. And then Elon mm-hmm. turns around and just fucks him, huh? Trying to, at least. Trying yeah. to, and it's uh, yeah. not going well. No. Student debt payments are resuming. The Supreme Court's decision to overturn Biden's plan on student loan forgiveness is complicating an already tricky situation for the U.S. economy. The resumption of student loan payments is estimated to pull $70 billion a year out of the economy, raising concerns about inflation and potential recession risks. What do we think about this? Got to pay to go to college. Right? Got to pay to go to college. Got to pay know. to go to grad school. The, the Supreme Court said that Biden overstepped his boundaries by not getting congressional approval using the HEROES Act from 2003 to grant over 400, what, billion trillion in student loan uh, forgiveness. But look, I think it's something that the, the whole economy is so large. $70 billion a year being pulled out, but it's being pulled out by people who this is probably something younger people are going to be putting into the economy. So we'll see a little bit of an impact. It is pretty interesting how like you've got doctors, surgeons, and lawyers mm-hmm. that are all getting their like masters and their, you know, you know, every other, their PhDs and whatnot. And then they, if you look at their net worth as like, and their cash balance, they're mm-hmm. just like deep, deep, deep in the red. In the red. And then they just shoot way yeah. up. Cause then yeah. all of a sudden they start making fucking half a million mm-hmm. a year. And it's and like, so should we be sympathetic? I, no, I don't think we should be sympathetic. I think we should like find more solutions to help them just like smooth that over. And that's mm. where I think you get into this whole like income share agreement, which I think that's only going to affect like the top five percent of these uh, these college students. But mm. I don't know. I mean, 
for-profit colleges, the oh. endowments. I mean, what isn't I, the endowment fund is probably worth more than seventy billion dollars. Oh, I mean, at, is, at least. Yeah. You know, it's like what thirty billion at UVA. You know, sixty, seventy Harvard. It's probably. like, yeah. come on, they got the money. They're Let's sitting on. Let's take it out right? of Harvard's endowment totally. to repay the loans. There you go. Right. They got enough money. Sarah Silverman is beefing with OpenAI. The author and comedian is suing OpenAI and Meta for copyright infringement. The suit claims that the companies train their AI models on her books without her permission. This sounds a lot like uh, some stories we covered recently. How are we feeling about uh, holding back your data from the AI machines? I've never read a Sarah Silverman book, nor would I ever. Uh, so she might be a little bit out of her league with this one. That the, She's saying all of the AI was trained on her book? No, not all of it. Just like that they were using her book to train the AI. So if you Which go AI? in... Open AI and Meta, all, so all the Chat AI. GPT and all the other companies. And what are they getting from her book? She's not that funny to me. You know, it's not an offense against anyone. She's not that funny to me. I guess the argument is that if you go into Chat GPT right now and you ask like what happened in chapter six of Sarah Silverman's book, they might tell you what happened there because they're using her book to fuel the that search. And then she's saying, hey, you got to buy my book. Did she sue Spark Notes too? Because, like, I mean, that's how I got through high school. That's so. it. Spark them, Chegg, all those other, yeah. Yeah. Well, just sue Chegg. Sue the shit out of Chegg. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I think this is going to be an interesting conversation with regards to copyright infringement. And you've heard a lot of uh, publishers that are very skeptical. The publishers. The publishers, the websites, the people that make content on the internet and giving that data away. There was a contentious fight a while ago, and this happens around the world, where Google search scrapes a bunch of websites and then they show summaries of the website and then you ultimately have to go and click to the website where the publisher can make money. In this case, you know, AI, you don't have to go to the website. So they want a licensing fee. People should be paid for their content usage, but we'll see where this, uh, how this- It might just be that she's on kind of the backside of her career. That could be it too. Could be it. I don't know. Logan Paul is under fire again. Lawmakers like Chuck Schumer are calling for the FDA to investigate Logan Paul's energy drink company, Prime. Prime is facing criticism due to its unhealthy, aggressively high caffeine levels, with one drink having the caffeine equivalent to six cans of Coke. Although the drink comes with a warning label that it is not recommended for children under 18, Prime is a wildly popular drink among children who probably shouldn't be consuming cauldrons of caffeine as chuck schumer put it what do we think about yo this? prime has been everywhere every everywhere. bodega i walk into everywhere. it's like prime now available get and your I prime not, get your zen it's, it's like, like the prime and the zen are just right next mm -hmm, to each other but mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean look people love caffeine i mean look at the it's, look it at the, powers the economy hurts it. nobody <laughs> benefits everybody <laughs> that's a good way to put it you know yeah i mean half the other stuff i really was a big fan of the uh alcohol and the uh the caffeine oh yeah drinks yeah, i mean still that am. got me through college yeah absolutely totally but they, they came down hard on that, but we'll see. I mean, look, like... I don't know but so th this like has 211 grams of caffeine, right? Dunkin' Donuts, a uh, fucking medium coffee is 215, a large 315, and a Starbucks blonde rose is 270. Are we going to regulate Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks, Chuck Schumer? My real question to Chuck Schumer is, so this guy's been in the Senate for about 20, what, I don't know, it's 25 years? While. Since 98, and he had an average senator salary, like, call 175K. His net worth is 81 million. Why don't, why don't we ask Chuck Schumer those questions? Maybe Logan Paul should get up there on the hill, call, fire back at him. What's call going into on, Pelosi Chuck? and see see how their stock trades exactly. are doing. Exactly. I, wonder what, I wonder if Chuck trades any stock. I mean, uh, you know, as a public servant for 25 years, to get to $81 million net worth, I feel like he probably does. China is an economic shit show. China's consumer inflation dropped to a 28-month low of 0%, raising concerns of potential deflation. China's producer prices also fell their fastest rate in over seven years. As China slides to the brink of deflation, policymakers are pushing to use more stimulus to give relief to the sluggish demand. What's going on in China? This is great news for us. You know, the normal levers of stimulus aren't working in China. Last year was the first time that deaths outpaced births for uh, the past six decades there, leading to concerns that by 2035, over a third of the population is going to be 60 or older. So who is going to be able to work in the fields and the factory floors of China to continue to stimulate their growth? Who knows? But you know what? This is really, really big for us because India 
reach China's population in April of this year. It's expected to surpass it this year. We have a big opportunity with India to make more of an alliance with them so we can take over and have more control in Asia and fight back against what the Chinese are doing. But look, I think that this is something that we're going to have to deal with with the rest of the world, given how much China exports. But overall, great news for us. Do you know what we have that China doesn't have? Freedom. NASCAR. NASCAR. You had a banger tweet last week. Yeah. Thank you for GM performance technology and the RO7 engines. Thank you for Sunoco racing fuel and Goodyear tires that bring performance and power to the track. Lord, I want to thank you for my smoking hot wife tonight, Lisa. My two children, Eli and Emma, or as we like to call them, the little E's. Lord, I pray you bless the drivers and use them tonight. May they put on a performance worthy of this great track. In Jesus' name, boogity, 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 amen. Like, that is why China will never (laughs) win, all right? In Jesus' name, boogity, 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 amen. Oh, man, I love it. Yeah, fuck you, China. The FDA plans to import more Chinese cancer drugs amid a nationwide shortage. Chemotherapy drug shortages in the U.S. have forced doctors to ration the care, which is putting patients' lives at risk. A spokesperson for the FDA confirmed that the agency is permitting 10 additional lots of essential chemotherapy cancer drug, cisplatan, Cisplatan? Cisplatan. Cisplatan. To be distributed by the Chinese company... <laughs> Good Clu- luck with that one. Clu Pharmaceutics. Clu Pharmaceutics. Ki- Kilu. 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 I don't know. know. It starts with a Q. Um, yeah, look, there's like 14 cancer drugs that, that we have a shortage of. Uh, you know, oftentimes the generic manufacturers in India have stopped manufacturing or export to the U.S., for various reasons starting in February. But this drug, it's been generic since I think 1978. But the concern here is that this this specific one manufactured by the Q company, they, uh, they haven't gone through FDA approval. So there's a lot of quality control issues with something like this. Personally, I would be very concerned to be taking someone, something rather, imported from China or someone imported from China. Yeah, I mean, I, I was curious, like uh, you heard about the, the diabetes drug that then all mm-hmm. of a sudden becomes the biggest health, lo- like weight loss pill ever. Mm-hmm. Are people using fucking chemotherapy drugs to... You lose your hair, though, right? I'd rather take Ozempic. There you go. But now we got to import this stuff from China to stop cancer. Man, we can't... We, we gotta, can't we keep relying on it. Exactly. China, huh? Exactly. Joe Biden is angry. Joe Biden likes ice cream, aviator sunglasses, and apparently yelling at his staff. According to current and former aides, President Biden reportedly has a very quick temper and is very much prone to yelling in private. The behavior is seen as an initiation ceremony and a sign of respect amongst his staff. So if he's yelling at you, you're doing a good job. Reports say occasionally public displays of his temper could alleviate questions about his engagement and age, which I fully agree with. What Dude, do we think? I love it. I love when he's just like whispering me, like, mm-hmm. get the fuck out of here mm-hmm. or whatever. It's like, oh. Call him the Fox News reporter. Yeah. Piece but it's of a shit. sign of respect. It's yeah. a sign of respect. So, you know, now you're in his inner circle now exactly. if you start getting the whispers. Exactly. Well, he's an Irish yeah. guy. I mean, what, what Irish guy doesn't yell every now and then, you know? Totally. I mean, like, and he's also getting castrated by every time he walks off a stage. And mm-hmm. slips or something. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows if he's he, gonna He fall needs over. to show more of this side. Like That's if people it. are calling him Sleepy Joe, people are getting upset that there's coke in the White House now. It's oh like, yeah, right. Side. That Pick was a whole other run. Right? Were you? Is that where you were? I, uh, I'm not saying where Jill was, but. I want to know what guys got the story that they actually railed lines in the yeah, White House. Like yeah. that's a good one. I'm and, sure that was. The and then first the story time for comes out, be like they might not ever find the person. Like what is that supposed to mean? Somebody goes into the White House with a bag of blow, does it, and then they can't find the person. Like I'm sure you could treat. They know exactly who that person Hunter's is. Hunter's tough to find. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Add him to the list. Oh boy. It could have been Jill though. Yeah, it could have been Jill, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, or it could have just been Joe. It could be used as a tool to and then he And then he starts yelling, That's you know? it. That could be his... <laughs> God, I want to know the dealer that's going to su- go I'm around the back of, of the that. White yeah, House. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's it. He's got that territory on lock. Cool. And that is all for This Week in Money. This Week in Money. Thank you for joining us. Please subscribe to the Bullish Studio YouTube. Shoot us a like and a comment below on what you'd like to see Mark and I talk about next week. Please support us and not China. We'll see you again next week. For next week in money. Do a little banter. I don't think I have an intro. All right. Oh, it's, it's fucking so hot as shit in here. Hot.
Yeah. Get the, why don't you get the, the you know banter in the beginning so we're not sitting here sweating? <laughs> I was saying the whole uh -huh. thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you like, did, were you like only allowed PG movies as a kid? Or? No, we just, I, they just tell me to read books. Oh, there you go. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, off, and it's like what well, I learned from fucking books. Time. I could have been watching, you know, Die Hard, right? <laughs> I haven't seen Die Hard. Uh -uh. Have you seen uh, Godfather? Um, I, I tried to watch it. It's just, it's, I can't sit still for that long. Yeah. Ryan King? Uh, no. Dude, you had to go see that on Broadway? Stage? No, I, the only like... two movies I remember seeing were Mulan and the Penguin movie. <laughs> the Penguin movie? I don't know why.